Greetings viewers. One of the most common questions that I have personally been asked or I have seen asked of others is, should I carry with a round in the chamber? You clicked on the video link and you want me to save you some time? Yes, you should carry with a round in the chamber. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. So for those of you that are uh, still here and want to know the why behind it. So first of all, let's take a look at the question itself. Typically when I have been asked this question or I have seen it asked of others, the person asking the question is still sort of, we'll just call them a newbie when it comes to guns. Maybe they own guns, they have guns they've shot at home, but they're branching out and they're starting to get into concealed carry or their state just opened up the ability to, for them to do so, or they waited forever and finally got their hands on their permit to be able to do it. Whatever the, the reason is, they're still new to it. They're maybe not so comfortable with guns. I get it, it's a safety thing. I've heard many people say that they would never carry a gun because they'd be afraid that they would do more harm to themselves or shoot themselves by accident instead of the bad guy. I get it, that's probably a little bit better of an approach to take than some people that are like, ah, I know everything there is, I'm never gonna have an issue, and they're the ones calling 911 because they have an unintended hole in some portion of their body as a result of their own negligence. So, now back to the reason that you are here. So there are several reasons why personally I feel that you that should not be a question that should have to be asked. If you are asking it because you are not comfortable, I would suggest that you get comfortable with it. If you are using some sort of modern pistol that has many different built-in safeties, depending on the brand that you're going with, you'll be fine. If I were to take a loaded pistol right now and set it on this table in front of me and just leave it, unless you uh, think Biden's doing a great job as president, you would know that that gun's not going to do anything on its own without some sort of interaction from someone or something getting into that trigger guard and actively pulling the trigger, defeating every other safety mechanism again, depending on the brand of pistol that's in question. The gun's not going to get up and go down to the local school or mall and start shooting people at random. We know that's not going to happen. It's a mechanical device. It's a tool. It requires some sort of input. So if you are not comfortable with it, having it wherever it is on your body and being able to draw it and get it out effectively and efficiently to use it if the situation dictates, you need to get comfortable with it. Practice, practice, practice. Put it in the holster on your body and practice getting it out. And as long as your finger is off of the trigger and where it's supposed to be indexed along the slide of the gun, you should have absolutely zero issues. So let's get past all that. You're, you're comfortable and you're good to go, but you just want to know why you should carry with a round in the chamber. Well, there's a couple different reasons. And so the first one is time. When a situation is going down and you have decided that the best course of action or the only action that you have is to draw your firearm and use it on an individual or individuals, plural, because we know wolves like to hunt in packs, time is money in that situation. Generally speaking, you do not have time to get your gun out rack the slide, and then start firing off rounds. So for one thing, part of concealed carry is the element of surprise. When you walk in a gas station, you're concealed carrying and you're not printing, it's not obvious you're carrying, you're not doing anything uh, that's indicating that you are, nobody in that store has any idea. They have no idea that you're carrying, they wouldn't give you a second look unless maybe they're looking you over to say, hey, this looks like some chump I can rob, and then you could prove them wrong after the fact. So now when a cop walks into a gas station, so everybody in that business knows that that cop has a gun on their hip. They can see it, it's present, they, it's the cops, they know that there's a gun. There's at least a minimum of one gun in that room. When you have to draw your gun and you want to use it as quickly as possible, you are now taking away that element of surprise because you've presented it. The bad guys or whoever you're intending to use it on has now seen it. You are then now having to take time to rack the slide before you can employ it. By that time, they may already be turning around and hightailing it away, which, great. In some situations, that's the desired result. Nobody has to die, nobody, uh, nobody has to go through a crazy legal process. Trust me, I'm well aware of that one from personal experience. It's not something you wanna have to go through. Now, let's just say that this person doesn't run away, and now you have given them the time that they need to respond appropriately. Maybe they're gonna draw their gun or they're going to reach for it while you're racking the slide. Whatever the, the situation is, again, I can't tell you every situation you're gonna be involved in. You, are, you have taken time away from yourself to get that gun in the fight. Now, you can say that, let's say it's a, an even match. You've got a bad guy with a gun, you've got a gun, but you've got a, and we're dueling it out here in the streets and you've gotta get that gun out and get it up. You absolutely with training could overcome that speed and as you'll see later on the range, you, you can overcome that. With enough pr training and practice, just like having a manual safety on a gun, if every time you draw that pistol out, you practice taking that safety off and it becomes second nature, much like if you have to rack the slide, it's second nature 
and you're going to do it every single time, that's great. You can speed that up and you might be faster than 80% of the people out there going straight from the holster to shooting and you have to rack the slide first. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's in an ideal world. That's on a flat range shooting at paper that's not shooting back with a timer running. In the real world, you don't know what's going to happen. What are you going to do if one of your arms is incapacitated? What if you got shot before you even knew the bad guy had a gun and before you could draw your gun and now you're only working with one hand? And you have trained and practiced and you're a right-handed shooter, you've got the gun in your right hand and you've got that smooth draw. Well, now this hand doesn't work. What if your dominant hand is out of play and all you have is your support hand and you haven't practiced even shooting left-handed on the range because you don't like it and it's not comfortable. So keep that in mind. Also, if you have kids, you've got a significant other, you're trying to fight through a crowd. What if you're using one hand or you're fighting with the bad guy and this hand is occupied? I've got an empty chambered gun in this hand. What good is it gonna do? Yes, there are ways that you can rack the slide on that, but why would you wanna put yourself in that situation again where you've now, you're fighting with somebody, you've presented the gun, they now know the gun's in play and instead of using it before they have a chance to respond, You've got a dead weapon that you've got to figure out how to charge, and by that time, you may be in a different situation, and now you're both in a struggle over the gun that's now finally loaded. So this is just something to keep in mind. Again, uh, I had a friend of mine come over. We went out to the range. We did some side-by-side -side shooting. We took turns shooting straight from the holster with a round in the chamber, all the while the other person had to rack the slide. So when I cut to the range portion, Whoever's standing on the left is the one that has to rack the slide. We did that just as a safety precaution, so in the event you're turning the gun a little bit and racking the slide, you don't accidentally uh, flag the person next to you, so that's why we set it up that way, and also just for consistency. I have the shot timer also showing the times. Some of them were quite surprising, where they were either going off at the same time or very close to. So again, if you train and you practice, yes, you can absolutely overcome that timing deficit, However, like the other things that I mentioned, don't give anybody else more of an advantage than they need, if, especially if they've already got the drop on you in a situation where you need to draw your gun. So quick video today. I'm going to cut to the range after this and then uh, the video will be over. So hopefully you found something useful, educational. Uh, if you have any questions, you think I didn't answer something or you think I missed something entirely, please post a comment down below and I'll uh, be glad to read it and respond as appropriate. And uh, if it's anything that's going to need more of an explanation, I'll be glad to do any sort of follow-up videos. So anyway, thanks for watching. We're going to cut to the range and uh, hope you have a great day. for a second so you can relax. They're going back on.